Yes, missing. It, missing or absent? What's the difference, missing and absent? <laughs> I think you've got more students during um, lab time. Come on. <clears throat> I already told Khan, we want to start early so that you can finish early. Or do you want to start late and we we'll finish late? Start late, finish at 10. Okay. Why? Why? Why you cannot come early? Why? What? What's wrong? Blame the bus. You know, some, some students like to scream, not, not on my evaluation, I see on other lecturers' evaluation. They say that uh, some lecturers are not understanding. When I, when I talk to the lecturer, it's, well, this, it, this is one of the things. The lecturer kind of start after 10 minutes while the students have not arrived. And then the, a bunch of students blaming the lecturer for not understanding. Like... Isn't it your responsibility to make sure that you are on time and everything? Quick, quick. And then you want to throw tantrum on the evaluation sheets. Well, it's not, it's not on my evaluation. I don't get that kind of evaluation, at least. I'm, I'm very particular about time, okay? Because I don't want you to, to miss lesson. Because, I, because we plan to... Here's the thing. Two, two hours is actually a bit too much for lesson. Okay? Time span is about only ooh, 70 minutes for you to learn. 70 minutes is about like what? One hour and 10 minutes. Okay? So that's the plan. Um... I'll teach you around that period of time and then we'll continue a bit more during the lab so that you have time to absorb. But for that to happen, you need to be on time so that we can finish early. Right. If I finish late, it, sorry, if I start late and then we finish at 10, do you have class at 10? Yeah. See? So, please, please be on time, okay? Okay, we're going to continue from where we left off, which is, I forgot actually. It should be this crop growth analysis. Okay. So the, the thing about growth analysis, number one, I hope you have committed to your head the three fundamental definitions, namely growth, development and differentiation get these first into your head please do not get it confused with other life events of plants because there, there are many events in plants okay these are not the only things that the plants do but fundamentally these need to happen first before other things can take place okay for example, the, the growing of the plants that is happening throughout the life cycle of a plant to some degree. It's not at the same rate, um, meaning that during the young period or the adolescent period, all organism tends to shoot, to spur in growth. However, when it gets um, a bit older, the growth, even though it is still occurring, it's going to be slowed down significantly. Okay. But it's still happening. And the same things go for the development. 
and also differentiation. <clears throat> so for that to happen, you, you need to understand, um, I hope you still remember the lessons from botany. Have you taken your botany? Yes. Still remember? Out of the window now? <clears throat> the, the good thing about, about, about the, the lesson list that I'll give to you, um, I've put also the botany lesson that I, I taught last semester. But not for our faculty, for faculty education. Well, the syllabus kind of the same, right? So if you want to revise, that can be um, your source of information, okay? So look at these uh, growth stages. You can see that um, even though these two plants are of the different species, you got that, the tomato, and this is what? What's that? Can we call it soybean? Kind of like a soybean, kind of like. Um, these two, um, the type of growth is called the annual plant, okay? Annuals means, it's what? Didn't, didn't let me ask you during the lab time? What happened to the annual plant? Can it live forever? Can, 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 cannot? What happened to the annual plant? Can it live forever or is it short-lived or will it die at some, some point? It will die at some point, okay? So this is the uh, typical example. Look at the tomato. It grows from the seeds and then it germinates, then it becomes, where's my, Can you get it? It will grow. You might see that the growing is actively happening here, especially for the, the sitting stage all to this stage. It just get enlarged in size. Does it, does it look different um, in terms of any additional structure? No, still all green. But the moment it enters the flowering stage and also the fruiting and ripening, you can see there are additional, additional organs added to the picture. What are they? What are additional organs added now? Flower and leaf. So there you go. That is the developmental phase. A new developmental phase started to happening. All right? <clears throat> what about the biennial and perennial? So for biennial, the same thing happened, but on a la longer time scale. It takes um, typically two years to complete until you get the end harvest. For the perennial, the plant get this, but this stage, the budding, flowering, and ripening for perennial repeats multiple times for many, many years to come. Okay, It's not going to repeat back from the sprouting. No, sprouting only happens one. But it kind of skips several phases, right? The good example is the orchard trees, the fruit, fruit trees. The mangoes, rambutans, durians. What else? Perennial. Is banana perennial? No. What is banana? Annual. Okay, that's good. <coughs> So the, 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 so this is something that I have mentioned during the the lab, okay? During the lab time, the growth is happening throughout the plant body. It is not identical somehow 
to your bodily pattern. You don't see growth in your hand. Is you still growing your fingers, your digits? Then it gets longer, then you can reach your friends. So if your if your if your hands not growing, is it alive or dead? But it's not growing. Is it developing, changing into something else? Fruit. Okay. So it's it's not growing. It's not developing. Is it living your hand? How can you de define it? It's living. It can move. Well, the, the tree can move as well. A bunch of ants jumping on it. So that's something for you to think about. Just now, fundamentally I said for the living thing, growing, developing, differentiating, needs to happen. That's a sign that you are alive. But look at your hands. It's not growing. It's not developing into something else. It's not differentiating into a new thing. Are you alive? So this is my point earlier, saying that there are other life events that also happen. But fundamentally, did the hand grow first? Did it grow first when you were a lot younger? It did develop when you were a fetus. When you were a fetus, did you have this? You were, you were literally like a leech. Okay, wiggling about in the womb. So, there are other life events that happen in here, okay? Think of it like a main, maintaining, maintaining, okay? So, it uses different kinds of genes to make it happen, right? <coughs> right, okay, so I hope you still remember this. Cell proliferation, which is increasing in number, cell enlargement, or sometimes people call it cell expansion. You just get one and then you get bigger because the volume gets more and more added up to it. And the other one is, is called the growth accretion. The cell does not increase in size, but they just fuse with other materials and make it look larger. Think of sedimentary rock when you learn your soil science. Originally, there's only one layer of sedimentary rock. Over the years, more and more layers added up to the top and then get cemented. Then you get a new, bigger structure, which is the accretion is all about. <coughs> the growth curve. I strongly suggest you to understand this because this is kind of, if you are naturally gifted with mathematics, this is a piece of cake. Are you? Are you gifted or are you cake? You're cake. You're cake. It's all right. Hopefully you, you, you enter that gifted territory very soon. <clears throat> I can never teach mathematics. I can only understand for by myself, okay? Um, if I teach mathematics, more people will start to cry. You will get six of this. Right, so look at this. This is, what is this? This L thing. Graph. Axis. What is what is this? X, Y. What's the other name of X axis? You know some fancy book, they, they don't use the X and Y. Actually, X and Y is, 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 is kind of new. Did you know? There's, there is a, the, the, the official name for this. You didn't, you didn't learn? It start with A. This is start with O. Absisa. 
ordinate abscissa is x axis ordinate is y axis did you know this uh, your 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 high school teacher probably forgot to mention this no no it's this 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 is good uh, to, um to know okay so the x axis is usually meant for um remember you learned in school about variables how many variables are there three what are they constant manipulated constant and fixed is the same what else that's it too well manipulated balas. responding responding variable or dependent variable this is independent Constant variables are the variables that are that are consistently the same throughout the course of experiment. Yeah, for example, like when you are growing chili plants in a farm, constant variables can include things like sun. Because you are in, in a tropical area, it's pretty much the same, right? Evergreen. Manipulated variables is there something that you are deliberately purposely change so that you can see something is happening to the, your crops for example um, the rate of fertilizer you have a piece of land and then you divide your land into four four sections into a quadrant the first quadrant maybe you want to give um, low rate of nitrogen and then the other three you start increasing so rate of nitrogen application now is your manipulated variables and the other is responding variable so after you have playing around varying this amount or concentration of nitrogen what do you hope to see what do you how do you intend to analyze the effects to the crops there are many ways maybe you want to see the effects of nitrogen on the leaf biomass because we know nitrogen is a leaf maker. So the leaf biomass, whether it is fresh leaf biomass or dry leaf biomass, has now become your responding variable or dependent variable. It depends on the treatments given to the crops. Clear? Okay. So the abscissa or X is meant for which variable? So this is, this is the thing that you manipulate. This, you see the effects here. You see the response here. All right. Do not change the other way around. So look at here. <clears throat> With the progression of time, can you, can you control time? No. If you cannot control, shouldn't it be fixed? Ah, ha, ha, here. Huh? Pergi, lah. Poor your friend, so scared. <laughs> Need to ask for, for permission to go. You, you can just go to relieve yourself, okay? Um, so you, can, you cannot change time. Shouldn't it be fixed? Like the sun shine just now. Hmm. How? 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 You know, all of these things are actually perspective. Okay? Even though just now we agree that sun, sunshine is your fixed or constant variables, if you want to look at from different perspective, it can be your treatment because the sun intensity is not same, the same throughout the year maybe that is larger 
the sun intensity it's not the same throughout the farm because some area of the farm is on the slope so your some side will receive more sun some side will receive less even though the sun in the space is giving constant amount of energy you can still play around with it you're not able to change the sun because you're not god but you can control the amount of sun or the light received by the crop the moment you control it even though you do not have the power over the source but you control how the source arrive at your subject that controlling is a form of manipulating and now it can become your manipulative rival in the case of time even though you cannot change time can you reverse time we know the time goes forward correct the good thing about time is it can come in number okay it can come in number meaning that it can increase in value days after days weeks after weeks years after years so you from from the new perspective now you can regard this as a form of increasing in value just like the sun intensity just now there is a high intensity of higher value there is a low intensity of lower value so you apply this concept now to the time you cannot control it but you can decide how it is regarded in your case with the progression of time maybe you want to see it within 30 days so you can use day to count the time but is if your experiment in a longer time scale let's say for a year maybe you don't want to use days you can use month you see you control it you control it you cannot control the source but you can manipulate how the source have impact on your subject right okay. and the y axis here this is the growth this is anything that you analyze how do you want to understand your plant has it has something happened to it has something not happened to it in what terms way height photosynthesis respiration rate and it doesn't have to be quantitative all the time quantitative means that it gives number it gives value it can be qualitative for example are qualitative features quality color color of the fruits what else the shape of the fruits would, would you want to buy a spiky coconut no, this is the coconut. You got all the water and everything, but it's spiky. Will people want to buy it? So, physical or morphology of your harvest, even though you can assign number, well, actually, there is a way to assign number to it. It is regarded as qualitative. Right. Okay. Look at this shape here. What do you call this shape? Sigmoid. Eh lah, sebab aku dah cakap kan? Sigmoid. Do you think there is other name for sigmoid curve? Like the X axis just now. <coughs> what is it? It start with L. Who got to answer in five seconds? Don't have to come. Got it. Ah, I got it. Logistic curve. <coughs> um, so what, what, what is this curve actually? Okay. We're going to take it slow because I want you to, to get the, the idea very firmly into your head because this thing is going to be applicable throughout your career. 
even though you are not agronomist, even though you're not horticulturist, whatever, even if you are working in a business accountant, you are going to see various kind of curve. This is only one kind. Have you um, assessed your OneDrive folder? Have you created your group? I like to ask this uh, in, for, in the second week because like usually 90% have not created because they just don't bother. If you have opened your OneDrive in the lesson, I have actually added something. You might want to open it. Where's my OneDrive? It's in here. Did I uninstall my own OneDrive? Which is very likely. This one is very, very funny. Oh, it's here, it's here, it's here. Can you open it? I just added two images, this image and that image. Welcome to mathematics. This is AdMed again. Who, who loves AdMed? You like it? Like, you like it, AdMed? You love it, good. Math mathematics are just told. There is no reason to be afraid. You can like it, but you're not able to teach it just like me. Okay. Um, I cannot. I cannot open it here. Mesti kau tak ambil kan? Nota yang baru. Um, you say has it got internet? Yeah, I think better open it from one drive every time. <clears throat> okay. Let's get your understanding correct first. There is a reason why I'm showing you this. So there are two images here. The first image is the concept summary between um, linear function and non-linear function, whatever that is in a bit. And then another image, the one with the smaller squares in it that is called parent functions so what are functions function is the relationship between two variables that is the simplest definition i can give to you what what are variables usually x and y what happened to y when something else is happening to x what is the weight of your leaf biomass when you give medium rate of nitrogen application? You see, there's a relationship there. So that is a function. So depending on your experimental setting, depending on the location of your crop, the function, the relationship can be of any kind. Okay. Think of it this way. You, all of you are humans, okay, among your friends, with your family. But would you say that your relationship is the same between the person next to you and also your sibling? Is it the same relationship? Your sibling and your friend, aren't they human? They are human or not? They are human, right. Are they Malaysian? Hopefully they are related. So they, 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 they are the same organisms. They share many characteristics. Maybe they are the same gender as well. Male, male, female, female. But when it comes to relationship, they are not the same. Why is that? Think again. This is of different perspective and different setting. This sibling is the one that is at home the one that you grow up with. The friend next to you is the one that you just met last semester. 
in a different setting, in a campus, in a university, in a different capacity, academic capacity. One is family capacity, one is academic friends kind of capacity. Even though they are the same, humans, Malaysians, male, female, they are the same. So the same thing happens for the X and Y relationship. Even though you are talking about the same plants, but the same plants, when they are being assessed differently, they are going to have different relationship. And these relationship are the functions. Okay, so you can see that there are, I'm, I'm re referring. Tak jumpa. No, no, it's all right. Uh, fine. It's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll switch it for it. Parent function. You should learn about functions in school. Should, this should be easier for you. This thing. Oh, you see. Yeah, I got it from Twitter actually. From from a guy. He was talking about some cannot be understood thing. I'll just make it bigger. Oh no. Oh, that's too small. How can I make it bigger? Can I use this? It's a bad quality, this monitor. I'll just... Why, why every, everything is small? Not to worry, not to worry. We filter first. Yeah, we can use this. Can we use this? Can you see it? it? Hasn't got a name on it. One moment, one moment. This is exercise. It hasn't got a name on it. I want the one with a name or name. Where is it? 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 Teruskan IPM. Semua tak cantik. Ah, let's open this. This, this is um. Yeah, kind of like that. Can you see that? Just pretend that you can see. <coughs> so these are some of the basic functions. You know what? I, I have actually complained many times so that they changed this projector. Nobody cares. That's, that's why it's, it, it looks so ugly. Like somebody that we know. What, you don't know ugly people in your life? Okay, there is a linear function. What's this? Even I cannot read. Go, 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 go. Constant function, linear function, constant function, absolute function, logarithmic function, exponential function, reciprocal function, quadratic function, and also the cubing function. There's a, a bit more, which is not covered here, which is right at the bottom in the image. That is called trigonometric function. The one, the cosine and sine function. Okay, why, why, why should be uh, knowing this? So for the linear function, this is the easiest one. One value of x increase, 
one value of the y will increase as well. So it kind of coincidental. One thing happen, another thing will happen. It's, it's easy, okay? You punch me, I punch you back, right? However, some functions, you can see that, for example, like this. Pay attention to this thing. Logarithmic function and also the exponential function because these two functions is the one that you found in here. Huh? It's the combination of two functions. Sort of. What is it? So you got your exponential. And then also you got off. What is that? Log. Logarithmic. Okay. So this exponential function is actually a part of this. So scientists who created the sigmoid curve then just realized, oh, actually they cannot use the exponential function alone. Why? Because as the time progressing, let's say that you are looking at the weight of the biomass again. We'll just use biomass, okay, for simplicity and the time. As the time progressing, it eventually, it becomes flattened out. Okay? It's not completely exponential. If exponential, it becomes like this. There is no... What is this? I already mentioned during the lab time. What is that? Constant? Plateau. Okay. <clears throat> so, what phase is this? Let's, let's label, label your sigmoid curve components. Okay? What is this? Lag. Phase. What is this? What is that? Log phase. Exponential phase. What is this? Stationary phase or plateau. Can you see here? This is something that you not usually in the notes. This is called transitional phase. Is it in your note? I don't think so. So you got your lag phase, exponential phase, transitional phase. Transitional phase meaning that it has started to become less in gradient. It was like this. Then suddenly, you see the smoothing out here? This is transition. It, it transitions into what? Into stationary or plateau phase. So wh why, why, why this is happening in, in nature? Why? Why is it? <clears throat> you have a cell. Your cell is dividing. Now we're talking about the cell number. The cell number also follow this logistic or sigmoid curve. It will start to divide slowly and then suddenly it will spur the division. This. And suddenly it will become slow and then constant. Why? When you have a cell, you put it in the petri dish with the nutrient solution and everything. Suddenly, it becomes plateau eventually. Why? 
this this is kind of like economic actually um there is a limitations in the availability of life requirements what are life requirements Food, water, yeah, nutrients, food, space, lighting, air, oxygen, and so on. So these things, when there were only two or three cells, everybody are happy. But when there are more and more of you, let's say that group one and two come and join in here. Are you happy? Or are you happy? My, oh, my, my boy is here. So this, the, the, the limitations of life requirements forced these responding variables to become constant. Or at some point, if you keep on putting more time to it, it can actually become decreasing. Okay. So in, in here, this phase is called inhibited inhibition. Inhibition, or we call it dying, die, or what, senescing, and so on, okay? <clears throat> Coming back to the, this shape of the curve, how, how, how eventually scientists know all of these shapes? How? How scientists know? There are shapes for the linear, there are shapes of uh, quadratic. How? Remember I said that there are always a relationship between two variables, and these two variables can happen anywhere. It can happen in science, physics field, biology field, chemistry field, economic field, accountant field, religious field, football field. So many fields. People from each field just simply do plotting, raw plotting. They have two variables, they just start to plot. In one field, when they plot, they see something like this. In, in some field or some discipline, when they plot, they got something like this. Just a general plotting. <clears throat> so what does this tell you? It means there is a pattern in life. Something is, being, is, is governing this in, in nature, making that when a situation is presented, Regardless of what is the details, it's going to follow this trend or pattern. For example, this can be the distribution of um, student height. Okay, student height. You will see that. By the way, what, what is this curse? What is it called? This is the... Have you learned your statistic? Bell curve or Gaussian. Gaussian distribution. So most students will be around 175 cm, for example. Some like one meter, some two meter. You see that? And this is only for the students' height distribution. We're talking about distribution now. Is this true for the number of um, cells in your body. Is this true? From years to years, is it the same? No, it's not going to be the same, right? Because of, it's of different trend, okay? So it's the same for this pattern and, and also for the so on, other patterns, okay? So that's how scientists decide. And then they collect all of these patterns in nature and also artificial. Then they come up with, they reverse it. They find 
how mathematics can describe this. They start, they start testing it. How to describe this curve? Y equals what? 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 So this, they start describing until they come up with the working equation. When they do this, immediately it will follow this. Then you got your functions. Okay? So I hope you know, even though you are learning plant physiology, plant science, it kind of hand to hand with mathematics. It's not that far away. Okay? Right. All right. So let's go back to this um, measurement of growth. Okay. How do you measure in growth? So growth can be measured um, any organs that you like or any organs of interest. The organs can be roots, shoots, stems, flower, fruits, and so on. Okay. Some organs, they are increasing in length. Some organs increasing in area or volume. It depends on the nature of the organs. Okay. You cannot say that um, the fruit is increasing in area. You want to measure the area of the fruit. Is, is that sensible? Shouldn't area be meant for leaf? Leaf area. Have you ever heard of fruit area? No. What about leaf area? Yes. So, common sense. Okay, things that you can measure when it comes to growth. Fresh weight. Fre fresh weight is the moment you have harvested your organ of interest, you might want to brush off some debris or dirt. For example, if you just harvested um, tapioca. You know tapioca? Okay. What's, what's the Latin name for tapioca? What? What's the Latin name for tapioca? The botanical name for it. You, you took your botany, right? You should know this. What? What? Ubi kayu nama yang ketuk kau bagi? Aku nak nama yang Latin nama botany. What is it? Tapioca. Apa dia? What, what family is it? Oh, Raiza. Oh, Raiza tu padi. Jangan merepek. Kasava. Kasava nama common lain untuk dia. <coughs> By the way, how how many name types are there? You know your botany, you should know this. There are scientific names. <coughs> Apa lagi? Common name. Botan <coughs> Fam itu taxonomy hierarchy. In essence, there are only two names, okay? Two types of name. You call it the, um, I'll just, I'll just write here, okay? Latin, scientific, or botanical names. Number two is that's only two. The first one is botanical name, the Latin name, or the scientific names. These are all synonyms. Okay, sama je maksud dia synonym. The other one is common names. The other way to call it is vernacular names. Vernacular names. So, maksudnya common names lah. Or, there's another one. <coughs> I forgot. Conventional name. So, cassava is... Uh, I want scientific name. What is it? Ah, what, what are the family of it? Ah, tak ingat. Family getah. Para rubber. Euphorobia. Yes. 
How do you pronounce this? When you learn botany, did you know there is a uh, the way to pronounce it? What? You Euphorbia C is one way. What are the way to pronounce it? Did you learn it or not? Yes or no? Euphorbia C is mean that means you are American. If you are European, you for B A C. A C. U for B A C. Like this, right? Pua. You pronounce it regularly. Poise. If you go to Italy, if you go to France, go to Britain, it's going to sound poise. 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 Erase. Arikasi. So the ending sounds AC. Which one is correct? Uh, depends on where you are. So if you get to be abroad, with, be with other students, when you hear somebody is saying differently when, than what you used to hear, don't say that people are wrong. Okay? Even the Quran recitation got seven different ways to do it right okay you still need to widen your horizon okay right so do you want to say poesy or poase poase okay i'll go poesy or do you want to poase all right okay all right okay so that's the, about the uh the tapioca uh part which you need to brush off to get the true fresh bit, okay? And then dry weight. Dry weight, whatever that you have, you have harvested, you dry it. Why? Because you want to eliminate all water so that it is pure biomass. Yeah, pure biomass produced by the plant, which is autotrophic organism. We all know Plants are autotrophic, meaning that it can make its own food. If you take fresh weight, that might not be due to the ability of the plant to make food. That can be simply due to the absorption of water, which you can do as well. Right. But if you take the dry weight, it can be a bit more accurate because you have eliminated the default function which is absorbing water you are just talking about the ability of the plant to make food can you make food yeah. even go to the kitchen still cannot okay all right length <clears throat> okay length there there are many ways to do it you, you need to, to recall your botanicalist lesson for the morphology of it. Because you need to define the length is from what to what. Okay, It can be the length of the stem, the length of the leaf, the length of the flower. So for, the, for, what, for whatever you want to measure, make sure that it is consistent. This is very important. That's why botanical knowledge is of essence because you need to decide i will take the length from one region to another region for example you want to take the length of a stem it kind of not possible to be done from the ground maybe because the plant is in the muddy water you don't really know when where it starts so you want to take maybe you want to take so this is your stem and that's the water and stone What is this? You know what this is? What is this? Sieve plate. This is the on the outside. What is that? This is a stem. Then you have this bumpy structure on the stem. What is it? This thing. 
node. So this bumpy thing is node. This whatever in between the two nodes, we call it. Do you have node? No, no. How do how do you fun, how do you move if you don't have nodes? Do you or do you have not nodes? Show me where is your nodes. Hmm, dana di siku. Do you have notes? Where? Belajar tak ni? Belajar tak notes into note? Okay. Do you have notes? Where? Apa? Dekat? Show me where? Tak ada sendiri? Mana? Okay. What is it called? What is it called? In your in your body, it is not called notes. You you, you have a notes. We agree that joints joints is sendi. Where where are your notes? Notes and internals. What are they in Malay? Mm, where is your buku? Uh, where is your ruas? In your your fingers. Yeah. Your fingers, your digits. So, the the thing that you use to knock on the surface, okay, buku tu, that is your knuckles. Your knuckles is equivalent to the notes. And then whatever in between is your internode. Alright? So, when you want to measure the length, it is more accurate if you say that you want to measure between two two units of notes meaning that from here all the way to here and you are being consistent with the rest of the plants regardless of however they are positioning in nature it is more accurate your data is more powerful okay because you are being consistent about it and what about the, about area <clears throat> area usually we use for um thin organ thin organ and also flat. What are such organs? Leaf. Okay. And in fact, I think for your activity, lab activity this week, you're going to learn about leaf area. Okay. <coughs> you got your leaf area. What is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? And what is this? What is this? Petio. What is this? Margin. The edge of it. What about this? Apex. What about this whole thing? Shape. What about this? Base. Okay. So what do you measure? The shape area. Okay. We don't include. Most of the time we don't include a petal. However, some some plants they kind of like look everything look the same. Yeah. Okay. It different from from species to species. We'll we'll see in in the lab um, later. Okay. So growth analysis, ooh, this thing. You see the first word, mathematical expression. Yay. Okay, let's see. So why do you need to measure growth analysis? Why do you need to do it? You need to identify the spatial and temporal integration of plant processes. Spatial means space. Temporal means time. You want to see when all of these come together, how does it have impact on your plant? Provided that you have give, given treatment to the plant, okay? Treatment doesn't mean that's something that you give. It, if you don't give anything, different plant species is already a treatment. Different species is already a treatment, okay? You've got the species like C3 plant species and also the C4 plant species. 
Do you know C3, C4 plants? No. Okay. Well, we'll learn. We'll learn endurance uh, photosynthesis. <clears throat> okay. However, this is regarded as destructive analysis, meaning that once you have used your plant for this growth analysis, for example, you use it for the dry matter, dry weight, that's it. It's gone. It's not like you can put it back to the mother plant. You can put it back, but as fertilizer. It's not coming back to the main body of the plant. So what are parameters used in growth analysis? Actually, there are many more. However, for the time being, and we'll see how, how much you can go, we're going to be focusing on these five first. Absolute relative growth rate, crop growth rate, net assimilation, and also the leaf index. Okay, absolute. Absolute is actually the, the easiest one. It's actually wants to know what value has been obtained with a progression of something, kind of like linear. When something happened, something will happen. Okay, when you get money, you become happy. Easy as that, all right? So that is the formula. Um, w is the weight. One and two means the two different time point. W2 means the final time point. And one is the initial time point, okay? Sorry, not W, T. W is the weight. So absolute growth rate can be of any organs. In this example, even though it's dealing with weight, can, can, can it be other things? Yes, it can be other things, but this is just for example, right? So the unit here is gram of dry matter per day, right? So this is the unit here. Look at the example here. The absolute growth rate plant per day. It's just a number of plant. Is it a number of plant? I cannot see very clearly here. Gram of plant per day. The weight of plant per day. So you can see that with the progression of the plant, they, after transplant, DAT, here, day after transplantation, the plant actually not growing or not accumulating the weight so much. Look, these are of different organs, okay? You've got the fruits, you've got the leaf, the stem, the root, and also the, what is that, tea? Total, total. However, when it has reached certain age, you will see that it's the, the, the growth start to spur. It will start to accumulate more. So you can regard this as actually kind of like your leg phase. It's acquiring the momentum. Okay? All right. So it's, this is the easiest one. Absolute growth rate. The other one is relative growth rate. <clears throat> Fair warning. You're going to see the word re relative maybe multiple times in different subjects. The easy um, way to understand this is whenever something has the word relative in it, it means that it is comparing to something. It must. For example, like the relative humidity. Have you heard that? R-ish, you know, in acorn and stuff. <clears throat> the moment it says relative, automatically that particular parameter is comparing to a standard. It doesn't say that, but it is understood that way. So in this case, it is comparing to what? Relative to what? In comparison to what? For this parameter, it wants to assess how much growth that has occurred given that original volume or area is in place, 
for example, I'll give you a little example here. <clears throat> so you have leaf of two sides here. So you got leaf A and leaf B. So for leaf A, so this is um, day one. This is day one as well. So what happened after five days? After five days, the leaf gets bigger. This also gets bigger. The increment from this original leaf into the D, D5 here, day 5 let's say that this is um, 10 square centimeter, this is 50 square centimeter. And this one, this is 40 square centimeter, this is 50 square centimeter. Between A and B, which one do you think has increased the most? A. A. Why? Yeah. So this is what um, RGR is all about. When something is already there, but you want to see how much it increased. Because sometimes people think if you already have a lot, you can increase a lot. That's not necessarily the case with nature. No, no. Sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's true, especially for the baby seedling, the seed seedling, the vigorous seedlings. When you have a big seedlings, usually you will have a vigorous adult as well. Yeah. But since this is nature, it can be the other way around easily. All right. And this is the formula for the RGR. Okay. And it follows this. What curve is this? What curve is this? Tak sampai 30 minute. What curve is that? Sigma curve lah, logistic curve. Don't don't get uh, get thrown off by this. It is still sigma. It is still sigmoid, but but with the progression, because you are dealing with living things. That's why I said, even though it is S-shaped, it has the potential to go down inhibited. Okay, because of the various limitation. The plants can receive all the nutrition, can receive all the water, the light that it needs. But when it gets so big, Physics doesn't, doesn't allow it to stand because it's just too heavy now. Maybe the, the soil, the ground cannot support it. It can grow, got the space, but it's just too big. What is your height? One point? Let's say 1.7. You get all the nutrition because you are so rich. Is it feasible for you to grow to three meter? Why not? You got, you got everything. You got your tailor to make your shirt. You got free voucher for MACD for one year. Right? You got everything. Free passes to Legoland to make you happy. Why? Physics just doesn't allow it. You, 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 you will um, tumble upon yourself. Okay? It's going to be very hard for you to move because when, when you are bigger, your volume has increased. When your volume has increased, it takes more energy for you to even lift one leg because the, there's, there's so much wa water. It's very dense. Okay, It takes more energy than you have to fight against the gravity, the air resistant 
right? Maybe the ground cannot withhold you anymore because you're just too heavy. Not that, to say that you are light now, but when you are three meter, that's even more too much, okay? So look at this formula. Look at this. Gram per gram per day. This is what? The, that, that original thing is this thing. Initial, correct, correct, initial. So when initial has been given, how much can be gained after certain days? So that's the concept of relative growth expression, all right? Okay, it indicates the proportionate growth of plant independent of their size. So this does not matter of whether the plant is big or not. We just want to see the performance of it, the performance of the leaf. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you're going to be of the same size. Yeah, maybe this is different because of the age of the leaf, the species of the leaf. Okay, so that's why it says independent of their size. Okay, so natural lawn of the weight two minus natural lawn of weight one over time two minus time one. Okay. Another one is the crop growth rate. Don't worry, okay? we'll do the exercise um, during lab because this is mathematics at math. Remember you at math, how beautiful it was? No. <laughs> how many papers you used to calculate stuff? Okay, so crop growth rate is about the matter accumulation over a period of time. So, the best way, this is just the definition of it, I just want you to see this. This is the formula. So, this formula is actually the combination of the other two parameters we have not discussed yet, but you have seen it at the beginning of the slide which is the leaf area index minus net assimilation rate. Okay? Right. Look at the unit here. Gram per meter square per day. There's so many units there. That's a weight unit. This is the area unit. This is the day unit. So it is more comprehensive, okay? Because it has incorporated other parameters into the equation, right? <clears throat> so it has been around for quite some time, but I can tell you one thing. In the real research, sometimes people don't use this because when you are using too many variables, you are dealing with nature. Nature is not always perfect. It will thrown off the value of this equation. Okay, but this is still in existence, right? NAR, net assimilation rate. So we, we use this to understand the increase of dry matter per unit leaf area. Look at the word, the keyword there, dry matter, why? The ability of the plant to accumulate food into the body because plant is autotrophic, it's making its own food. Per centimeter, meaning that the plant makes food because it has leaves. The leaves is capturing the sunlight and then turn the light energy into chemical energy. So this parameter will tell you how much dry matter, dry biomass can be accumulated for every square area of the leaf which is doing active photosynthesis per day or per week. That this is changeable, okay? So it will tell the performance of the crop right away. And this is the formula. <coughs> so you can see that these are it's not clear here. That is the um, humic acid concentration. 100%, 75%, what else? 50%, and also the 
um, H1 and HO. HO, I think uh, HO hasn't got any uh, HMS in it. All right. I want you to look at the pattern here. Is there any function that you have seen in the parent function that can describe this? Look at the parent function. Any function? Do you need one function or two function? What do you think? Do 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 you do you use the exponent, exponential, or logarithmic function? Which one do you use? Actually, the answer is already there. What? Log la, but eh. <laughs> Look at the parent function. Remember the function, it can be the reverse the shape if it's negative. Look at the logarithmic function. This can be transposed on the other side of it. See the pending, eh? Macam, oh, apa benda tiba? Add mat datang balik ni. Why is it following me? <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is your daily mat. You know daily mat? Yeah. At night, you have night mat. Next morning, when you see me, you are having daily mat. So, welcome. Right. So what, what it tells about what? About the dry matter accumulation per meter square per day. You can say that the dry matter, regardless of the treatment, whether it's high fertilizer rate or not, fertil not, not so high, it will increase and then it will come down with the progression of time because the plant has the limits. Fertilizer is not the only thing that it requires. It needs other things as well. Maybe it has all the nutrients it needs. However, it doesn't have the space. Or maybe naturally, the plant is a small plant. What plant is this? Did you say? It doesn't say. Yeah, maybe it's an annual plant. You're going to get a slightly different thing if it's a perennial plant, okay? Right, and this is the full formula of it. All right, it was the earlier formula, but in a more neat, neater form. All right, if you remember from the RGR right now, just now, it uses what what was what what was the log that it used? What's this? Natural. Log, natural log, and now it suddenly it use log e. What's that? So it's actually the same thing, okay? The e, the natural log, is actually using the Euler's number, Euler's constant, Euler's constant, okay? So. It's the same as this, okay? This is the same as this. Natural logarithm, okay? So it's in the form of log E or ln. It depends on your calculator. I mentioned this because some calculator, they don't, they don't use ln. It uses log E. It is synonym like cassava and tapioca. Right, okay. So the number, what is the number? This. The Euler's number. 2.7, like, like 5. Where it come? Don't ask. If we talk about that, I'm going to open class for National Geographic. Which is very long. Because Pharaoh, the Pharaoh got so many things to talk about. Long, long time ago. Right? Okay. Have you learned this before? No? <laughs> Sometimes students learn, but you know, it's just too many things, right? Okay? Okay, and then leaf error index. Leaf error index, this is quite uh, easy because it hasn't got any dimension. No unit, okay? 
this is just the i just want to see this the the interception of the leaf 0 0.4 means that 40 percent of the leaf is covering the ground it's very easy very easy and then for the plant that has more leaf of course you can intercept more light therefore your leaf area index is going to increase right what about lai 1.8 that's even more meaning that the leaves are overlapping see lots of it overlapping this is what we call as the what, what shape do you call this when you when you look from the top it has got this like like tobacco plant or um cabbage what is that what shape what do you shape do you call that but that's not palmate palmate is this thing palm palmate the palm that is rosette rosette okay and that's the formula leaf area over the ground area that it is stand for very easy no unit dimensionless or unitless okay yeah so this is two example plan a versus plan b which which one is better plan why it has got more leaf but since you are a physiology student now you are going to speculate things you don't accept as the way it is because you know people are jahat jahat like going over in our own dunia if it has small leaf it means that it has to use more resources to manage the living leaf the question now is can the leaf compensate the cost to maintain you have more leaf you think it's good because it's, it can intercept more light to do more photosynthesis but do not forget things the living leaf need basic resources to stay alive so the question is that you are playing around with physiology is this good or otherwise can the leaf be on the economic side of it let's say that this produce 10 gram of sugar this produce 12 gram of sugar it is slightly more but is it still economic or not why not because the air, the leaf index increased by 50 percent oh no 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 50 percent 100 percent 100 percent so we would expect the sugar to be more than that otherwise why change it should be more than 20 grams yes. right otherwise there is no point to have more leaf area index just stay here right plus if you have more leaves means that the, your plant has to grow longer you have to wait for a longer period of time to get your harvest right yeah so um, this is oh the moment you see tasseling you know you are dealing with corn only corn got the, the tasseling period et is the economic threshold <clears throat> meaning that the leaf area will have two points that it touches throughout the time one is here one is here economic threshold have you learned economic threshold Ooh. Economic threshold is um, the the simple way to put it. The the time that you decide to do costly thing before you lose money, meaning that your your plants will get eaten by insects. If you see symptoms, it get it gets bitten, and then you spray right away. That might not be the best way to do it because you are losing money because spraying is costing in agriculture okay but how can you know when to spray this is when you use the economic threshold you wait until it has reached the the economic threshold 
Meaning that if you wait any longer, the beaten leaf will incur losses to your harvest. So this is the time. Proceed with the spraying. Even though spraying needs some cost, the cost will be compensated by losing harvest due to the insects eating on your plants. Okay, so you, uh, it depends on the crops. Okay, so the reason that you are seeing here, you can see that the economic threshold kind of, um, well, even though it says two point, even though it says two point seven, it can change with time depending on the leaf area index. Okay, sometimes the leaf can can be more, but is it economic for, for me to, to wait for it? Meaning that, can you harvest here at this time? Why? You cannot harvest here because this is still castling. You still no corn. So you want to wait until here. But can you harvest a bit higher? What's that thing? Can you harvest a bit higher? You see this line here? Whatever you, when you harvest during this area, economic losses. Whenever you harvest here, you economically good for you. All right, yes, gain profit. So you need to wait until here. Because um, leaf for corn is actually used by the silage industry it's not all about the corn they harvest the corn so that you can have your popcorn and stuff what about the leaves they turn it into silage you know silage i do not know silage in malay what is it silage they use it for feedstock feedstock have you taken your animal science uh, you, you 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 learn this Still like this, okay? Some and many other examples, okay? Yeah, it, it gives you the hunch um, when when to harvest. You you want to get the most leaf as well, but if you if you harvest here, you get your leaf, but you don't get your corn. But if you if you if you harvest here, you get the most leaf uh, here. Still, you do not get the corn, so you need to play around with it, right? You'll learn more in, in, in economy, okay? Just more example of it, yeah. So, you can see that the leaf area index of three different species, these are all grasses, rice, maize, and sorghum. With the progression of time, you can see that it is not static. For, I don't know what is this, this is sorghum. What's the difference between maize and rice? What's the difference? One is C3 photosynthesis, one is C4 photosynthesis. You will learn about photosynthesis, but for the time being, just understand that C4 rice, C, sorry, C4 plants, in tropical area is more productive than C3 plants, okay? <clears throat> but when it's not hot, C3 plants always win, okay? And then this is also the um, light interception and also this is days after after sowing. This is left tech. Okay, look at this. The more leaf area index that you have, the more light interception that you can get. But it's only going to, what, what shape is this? What function is this? Exponential or log? Exponential, okay. Why it becomes plateau? Why is it not increasing? Because the leaf are overlapping. Uh, the, you just saw just now, right? The, the two plants, the 40% uh, LAI and 80% LAI. All right. Okay. That's all.
That, those are just five. Actually, there are many more. Ooh. And these are all regarded as classic growth analysis in plant physiology. All right? We're not going to cover all. Let's see my mode. <clears throat> Let's see my mode. Okay? If I'm not happy, maybe I'll, I'll make you learn all. You want to learn all? All right. Okay. So I think that's all for today. So please create group. What did I ask last week? Create your group and then snap the picture of your group and then, all right, put it into your folder. Create your group folder. Please do it. Like, don't, don't make me repeat stuff. The, the fact that lecturer has to repeat things, something not right with you. Can you share it on uh, your one It's everybody got access to it. Yeah, so we share it there. No, no, no. You don't. You, you don't have to do anything. Whatever you do, I'll I'll see on my screen right away. It's a cloud storage. It's a cloud storage. You can tell. You can tell because you 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 you, you want to um, gain attention so much. Your group. We've done it. We've done it. We've done it. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Like, like okay, fine. You can tell me, but it's not necessary. You can tell me, it's, it's, it's fine. You want to tell me, okay, on, when you come on uh, lab time, oh, we have done it. We have done it. We've, we've put everything. We've put flower. We've put uh, Nemo movie in there. Watch, watch. You can. Oh, you can put movie in there. That's my premium account. So, got lots of space in there. All right. Okay. Any question? Any question? Oi. Nyaman nyembang. Ada soalan? Aku tanya soalan. Duk riang gembira sangat. Boleh datang on time next week? A apa jadi kalau kau tak datang on time? Hmm. You know I'm very creative with punishment. Sangat-sangat kreatif. -sangat like People like to say like, kau akan ingat sebelum mati? Tak, tak, tak. Aku kan kau ingat sebelum mati. Kau bangun balik pun kau ingat lagi. Okay, alright. If that's no question, I think that's all for today. I'll see you on, um, when is it? Wednesday. Remember, do not go to lab E, agro E. Go to physiology lab, ground floor. At the corner, near the lift. Not in the lift, near the lift. The lift cannot occupy all of you. Okay? Go to physiology lab. Um, I think you need pencils. Better, better bring pencils and also some papers. Okay? Because we are doing the graph uh, shading, shading method. Alright? <coughs> when I say pencils, I mean the old wooden pencil, not your thick, thick pencil. Alright, okay. I'll see you.